Hi, I'm Debbie Naki, the Executive Director of the Delta Gamma Center for Children with Visual Impairments. Like a good ride, there's quite a story to the start of the Tandem Adventure Cycling Team. But suffice it to say, like many of the programs offered by the Delta Gamma Center for Children with Visual Impairments, this service was also started in a grassroots way. In fact, this video represents what we've learned over the first years of running this program. Youth enrolled in our grads program, which provides support and recreation for school-age kids, shared with us that they wanted to be able to ride a bike like everybody else. So that summer, when we planned their annual challenge trip, we took a 110-mile tandem cycling trip across Missouri on the Katy Trail. Some of them fell in love with cycling, and it was out of that trip that the tandem team was started in 2007. For children who are blind or visually impaired, you may not think it's possible for them to ride a bike. But in fact, for many children served by the Delta Gamma Center, it's a very real possibility. For those of you who rode a bike growing up, you know that riding a bike is one of the quintessential joys of childhood, and we wanted our children to experience it as well. Tandem Adventures, like all of our grads programs, has three main goals, to build friendships, to build independence, and to provide opportunities to participate in activities that build strong minds and bodies. And Tandem Adventures meets from April through September. They have regularly scheduled rides, and this program is for children ages 10 through 18. In the words of one of our veteran captains, to have any impact at all on our kids, no matter how small, that will brighten their day, will encourage them to challenge themselves to attain goals, or that will bring more positive reinforcement or confidence for them, this is why we ride. Hi, my name is Mark Abels and this is Kirsten Rompel. We are going to be covering important things to know as a captain for Delta Gamma Center's Tandem Adventurers program. That's right, Mark. Well-trained captains are vital to the group's success. Experienced cyclists who volunteer contribute to the overall enjoyment of the ride and are paramount to the safety of our rides. So how does one begin the journey as captain, Mark? Cyclists who have expressed interest typically join us as guests on a training ride to observe the processes and get a sense of the group dynamics and the level of cycling experience that's required of a captain. It's also an opportunity to observe the interaction between captain and stoker, that's the backseat rider, and the general enjoyment we share each time we ride. When a decision to join the tandem team has been made, we schedule a training session to cover the proper techniques used for safe and efficient tandem riding. It's not hard, but definitely different than piloting a single bike. That's right, Kirsten. We often have new captains wear blindfolds and ride in the rear or stoker position with an experienced captain to simulate those sensations experienced by our stokers with visual impairments. This enables the captain to better understand what their partner may be experiencing during our rides and makes the training much more meaningful. This video provides some basic information about the key elements of serving as a tandem captain for a child with blindness or visual impairment. We try to keep Captain Stoker assignments consistent to ensure the continuity of the relationship between specific captains and stokers. So a one-year commitment is preferred. Familiarity with one's partner fosters a bond of trust and confidence, which has proven to be an essential element of the program.
prior to each ride, the tandem coordinator sends an email to stokers and captains requesting a confirmation for participation. Once received, the coordinator will assign each captain both a particular tandem bike and a stoker for the upcoming event. These matchups are based on size, weight, ability, experience, balance, and whether there's a need for an adapted or modified bike. Also, familiarity with the stoker is very important. Each stoker possesses a different level of fitness, physical ability, balance, and coordination. There are numerous checks we employ to ensure stoker safety and proper positioning on the bike. Upon arrival, captains begin the preparation of their assigned bike, ensuring proper tire inflation, braking, shifting, and other critical factors of operation of their bike. They will also install the specific pedal types on both their and their stoker's crank arms and adjust their seat height for optimal riding comfort and efficiency. The captain greets and welcomes his or her stoker and greets the parents. Parents usually have useful tips for getting along with their children. With the help of another captain or solo rider, we fit the stoker to the bike, ensuring proper seat height and pedal adaptation. If the bike is a modified or adaptive bike, there may be additional checks, such as chest straps on modified seats, adapted pedals, and handlebar adaptations for additional support. Then, it's time to mount up. The captain will straddle the bike with a very wide stance and with the brake supplied. Once the captain has indicated he or she is ready, stokers are assisted onto the bike, and proper seat height is established for them. Normally, this is followed by a few warm-up laps around the parking lot. We take a few minutes to remind everyone of our team goals, which are primarily to enjoy a safe and fun ride. Once all tandems are properly prepared and everyone is ready to ride, we stage the tandems at the entrance to the street, and with the assistance of our solo riders, we embark on the day's ride. It's important to know that the rules of the road apply to our rides, as bicycles are subject to the same laws as automobiles. We obey all traffic signs, turn lanes, and we ride single file on the right side of the road. We stay in a group, a rolling barricade, in which a solo rider is always in front of the group and a solo rider always in the back, bracketing our tandems. We attempt to stay as close as a group as possible so that the rear solo rider can see the front at all times. We train our stokers, where physically possible, to signal turns, right. slowing or stopping, to alert cars and pedestrians of our intentions. We are constantly vigilant on anticipating what cars, other cyclists, runners, walkers, and anyone sharing the road may do. The adage, where there's a ball, there's a boy, is certainly applicable when we ride and our captains approach each ride with safety being their chief concern. If we have to stop for any reason, we stay well off to the side of the road, away from traffic and not hidden by parked cars, remaining highly visible to passing cars and other cyclists. Communication between the partners is absolutely essential in tandem cycling, especially with stokers who are visually impaired. Captains provide ongoing verbal cues whether during the process of getting on or off the bike or during the rides themselves. Communication when starting is especially important. One example is when we are at a complete stop and need to establish some momentum to allow us better balance in moving forward. Typically, this is achieved by using a countdown of three, two, one, push, to announce a start or three, two, one, stop. We tell our stokers how much pedaling effort is needed, for example, when we are at the base of a hill that will require some additional horsepower. 
One method is to grade the hill's degree of difficulty by assigning a number between 1 and 10, depending on its length and steepness, so the stoker understands how hard to pedal. Another method on hills is to count down the number for the grade, timing the last number at the top of the hill so the stoker knows how long to pedal. We call out upcoming bumps in the road and potential obstacles we may have to navigate around. So that may require the stoker to rise off the saddle temporarily for comfort. We tell them when we will be shifting gears, when we will be cornering or coasting, when we need to resume pedaling, all in the spirit of communicating every detail during the ride to minimize or eliminate sudden and unexpected occurrences. As we remain focused on the safety and enjoyment of our stokers, we engage in ongoing and spirited conversation with them. We may describe details about the surroundings, mention something noteworthy, such as golfers or a wedding party taking pictures or crowds gathering for an event. We are their eyes and we can enhance the activity by creating a landscape for their imagination. We will discuss their interests, their experiences, whatever's important to them. In short, whatever we can do to improve the experience will be done. We ride for their benefit. It is not uncommon to promote some friendly competition among the stokers in an effort to maintain fitness and help achieve both individual and team goals. Above all, hope to further stimulate their enthusiasm for cycling and their developing friendships among one another. Riding in a group allows captains to be watchful of all stokers with whom they are riding, not just their own partners, so we can quickly react to any issue that might arise. On occasion, we may need to split into smaller groups, largely due to various levels of ability and experience. When this occurs, each group will have a solo rider as well as assigned certified medical personnel for participants who may require medications. Once again, the overall safety of the group is paramount. Each ride ends with snacks and conversation until the children can be reunited with a parent or family member. We often recognize particular stokers who showed marked improvement, who displayed a bit more enthusiasm, or who contributed additional leadership to the group. This always gets a great response from both the recipient of the award and the group, further bolstering confidence and eagerness to ride again. Captains and stokers are encouraged to provide feedback on the day's activity, what problems may have occurred or what we might need to change for future rides that would make it more fun and inspire more involvement. We are constantly learning new and different ways to improve the overall experience. Post-ride wrap-ups include communication with the tandem coordinator about any issues captains may have encountered during the ride, both relative to their stoker and the bike itself. Maintenance needs are documented so that the arrangements can be made for necessary repairs or adjustments. Finally, it is time for the stokers to head home, but not always willingly. More often than not, we hear, let's, let's ride, ride some, some more. more. <laughs> this is what keeps us coming back. This is why we ride. Hi, I'm Barry Jackman of the St. Louis Blues. I've had a great opportunity to work with uh, Delta Gamma Center and uh, kids with visual impairment while riding a tandem bike. It's a great way to get out, get some exercise, and it's all about communication and, uh, and self-confidence with kids. Uh, I just like to ask everybody to get out and uh, give these kids an opportunity to uh, just be, uh, be kids. Thank you. If after seeing this video you would like to know more or would like to share your love of cycling with our kids, please contact us at info at dgckids.org or call us at 314-776-1300. We'd love to hear from you.